Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be looking at physics with free fall acceleration. So in the absence of air resistance, almost all the things that you're going to be dealing with in the beginning will have no air resistance. All objects will fall at the exact same constant acceleration and that is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and that would be gravity. Now, that is what the, well, that's still mm, approximated and it changes based on where you are on the planet. But for AP, you would typically use just 9.8 meters per second squared. And you'll even see some using just 10 meters per second squared. Um, I will typically be using the negative 9.81. 9.8, excuse me, 9.81 is just a little too exact for me, okay? So we're gonna be using that and we're gonna be using a kinematic equation. You could technically have to use all of the ones that we had before, but the one that typically gets used is the uh, delta x, which in this case is gonna be delta y, vit plus one half at squared, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite that. Delta y, which is the change in y, is equal to vi times t plus one half a, which is negative 9.8 because the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 t squared. So that is the formula we'll be using for the majority of the problems today. All right, if an object is dropped at rest though, what would be the initial velocity? Well, if it has like just been dropped, it hasn't been thrown, that means that the initial velocity would be equal to, would be equal to zero, all right? And that means the only thing affecting it would be the 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. And your formula would be the change in y or the distance that it would have traveled up and or down would be equal to zero for v of t. So this term would just kind of cancel out and it would just be equal to one half negative 9.8 t squared which turns into delta y equals negative 4.9 t squared, okay? So that would be if it is just dropped. On other equations, we will have an initial velocity. It would be thrown upward, and we'll have to use the full equation. So if you drop a camera off a cliff with a height of h, determine the time it takes to hit the ground if it is in the positive direction. Okay, so if that is the case, we have delta y, which we're gonna be calling h, and it would not have an initial velocity, so that vit part is gonna go bye-bye, plus one-half negative 9.8 t squared, which should be the height is equal to negative 4.9 t squared. Well, we want to determine the time it takes, so we just need to take this formula and solve for time, which means we would have to divide by negative 4.9, h over negative 4.9, and that would equal t squared, and then you would square root it. So the square root of h over negative 4.9 would be equal to our time formula for when it would hit the ground, and that negative 4.9 is gravity, and so on and so forth. All right, a rock is dropped off a cliff, let's do some actual problems, of 80 meters. How long does it take the object to reach the ground? So if we have a um, formula here that you could utilize, or you could go back to your original delta y one, I like the delta y one. So it would be dropped from an initial height of 80, that would be the change in y, would equal one half, times 9.8, negative 9.8 t squared. And you also have to think, is this 80 going to be positive? Well, if it's dropped from a height of 80, that means it went down by 80 degrees. If it goes down by 80 degrees, you need to make sure that 80 is negative, otherwise you can't square root it. So we're gonna end up dividing the 80 by the 4.9, the negative 80 by the 4.9, and you'd get 16.32 is equal to t squared. The square root of that, according to my calculator, is equal to 4.04 seconds, approximately. At what speed does the object strike the ground at? Well, 
we could utilize a different formula at this point because we need to know the final speed. Well, the final speed would be equal to VI plus AT, okay? So we can use the final speed as what we're looking for. We don't have an initial speed, but we do know gravity and so on, and the time. We just found the time is 4.04, .04, so we're gonna use this no displacement formula. VF will equal VI, but there is no VI, plus 9.8, negative 9.8 times T. There is no one half, so that's why it's still negative 9.8 and it's not gonna turn into 4.9. We gotta plug in the four seconds, so the final velocity would equal zero, we don't have an initial velocity, plus negative 9.8 times 4.04. .04. Well, all you gotta really do to figure out the final velocity is do 9.8 times 4.04, .04, and you figure out the final velocity is equal to a downward direction of negative 39, 0.59, and that would be in meters per second for velocity. So it will continue to get faster as it approaches the ground. Okay, so what would happen if we now, instead of just dropping an object, but threw it up into the air? So if we throw it up into the air, that original time would equal zero when we throw it up into the air, and it would have a VI, okay, that would be your actual initial velocity and it would, it would have one. And if we do that, then it's gonna go up and gravity is gonna be slowing it down in its upward path, but it's only gonna have that initial velocity. It's not gonna be accelerating upward. It's going to be slowly working its way downward, but it has to de uh, lose that initial velocity and then start to go accelerating downward again. So, but when we're at the top, What's very important at the top, that max height, we are not going up or down. This ball is just stationary for a very, very split moment. And during that stationary moment, it has a velocity which is zero because it's not going up or down. That would be the slope at that given moment. So the velocity is zero meters per second there. And on its way down, it's still going negative 9.8 meters per second squared according to gravity. On its way up, it's technically being decelerated at negative 9.8 meters per second. So at some point, the object is going to return to the height that it originally was. And at that point, you could think of delta y is equal to zero when it gets to that original height. That would be when it gets to the original height. Um, but then it could stop earlier or it could go further down. So like this original delta y could be positive or negative and so on and so forth, okay? At that moment though, when it is at the exact same height, cool feature, initial velocity will be the same in opposite direction, of course. Um, because on the initial velocity it's going up and then as we work our way down, it, once we get to this moment, it would be going the exact same speed but in the opposite direction. So it would be the opposite of the initial velocity. The initial velocity would be in the upward direction and then once you get back to that same height, you'd be just going in the negative direction for that speed. All right, so if you wanted to calculate the maximum height of something, what did we just learn? That means that the velocity would be equal to zero, but specifically the final velocity would be equal to zero. So if the final velocity is equal to zero, then you could utilize the formulas to be able to deal with that because we have formulas that have both of them. So with that in mind, we could utilize the VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2a times delta y. It is from the kinematic formulas right here that I got written down, and you should have as well. And we would want the vf squared to be equal to zero in that case. Calculate the time it takes to reach its maximum height, you would have to utilize a slightly different formula because in this case, you may notice that there is no t in here. So if you wanted to figure out that, 
we would have to use a slightly different formula. Again, we would have to do VF is equal to VI plus AT. And again, you would plug in zero for VF. How long is the thing in the air? Well, that would probably be dealt with. Um, uh, let's see, I would deal with it with the, um, how long is the thing in the air? With the delta Y is equal to VI times T plus one half AT squared because you could set delta Y equal to zero and figure out when it like lands on the ground. But it really is dependent on when it, like what height that is on the ground. And what speed will it strike the ground? Well, I would again use the VF is equal to VI plus AT there because we know we're looking for the final speed and we would have the initial speed and we would have gravity and so on and so forth and the time, assumingly. All right, let's do an example. One example of this, maybe two, and we'll be done for the day. A rocket is ascending at 12 meters per second. It turns off its booster at 22 meters above the ground. So we have an initial height here and we have an initial velocity. How long will it take it to reach its maximum height? Well, if we want to reach the maximum height, the maximum height, the velocity is equal to zero, okay? So, and we're looking for a time here. So we need something with a time and we need something with an initial velocity and a final velocity. Well, VF would equal to VI plus AT. And if you think about it here, we don't care about the distance that it is above the ground at that point. We just care about the final velocity. Well, the final velocity would be equal to zero is equal to VI, we know that, 12 meters per second, plus A, negative 9.8, times time. Well, we don't know the time, we just have to solve for time. So if we solve for time, we get positive 9.8 T, no, let's just subtract the 12. Negative 12 meters per second would equal to negative 9.8 T. We divide by negative 9.8, and when you divide by negative 9.8, and divide by negative 9.8, we would end up with a time of negative 12 divided by negative 9.8 of 1.22 seconds. Rounding to three significant digits there. How high will the rocket rise? Well, now that you know the time, now you can use the time to figure out the actual height of the rocket. So if we wanted to do part B, which we do, how high will the rocket go into the air? Well. If we know the time, then we could plug in a delta Y is equal to VI times T plus one half A T squared. And we would just plug in the time for that formula. So we do know that it is 22 meters above the ground when it started. So we would have VF, not VF, the initial height taken away from the final height, so um, delta Y is equal to Y final minus Y initial is equal to, we know the initial speed, 12 times T, which we know 1.22, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times the new time that we found out, 1.22 squared, and we need to plug in the minus 22 part. So y final minus 22 will equal 12 times 1.22, so on and so forth. 12 times 1.22 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 1.22 squared is 7.34684. I don't know why I wrote that many decimals, but we would have to add 22 to that. And when we add 22 to that, we get a height, a final height at 29.34. Okay, now, all that being said, uh, we could have utilized a slightly different formula as well. I just utilized one of them. You could have done your initial and your final 
and divide it by two and multiply it by time and you could still get it there as well. There, once you find time, you can utilize more than one formula to get your final answer. All right. How long will it take the object to reach the ground? Well, if we want to figure out when the object will reach the ground, that means that we would need to realize that delta y is equal to vi times t plus 1 half times negative 9.8 t squared. We don't know the time. Don't have a clue, but we would know that the change in y, if it started 22 meters above the ground, <coughs> excuse me, would be negative 22 for the height when it hit the ground because it would have to be lower by 22. We still have 12 for our initial velocity times time. And we still have 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared. From here, you would need to add the 22 over and get 0 is equal to 12 t plus minus 4.9 t squared plus 22. And from there, you would need to utilize the quadratic formula, unfortunately. And if you'd use the quadratic formula, you would end up with a final answer from the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, you would end up with a final answer of two things. You'd end up with negative 1.2 seconds, but you would also answer with 3.6 seconds as well. The negative 1.2 would be if it went like backwards in the backwards direction from the 22 meters above the ground. And what speed will it strike the ground? Well, now that you know the time at which it struck the ground, which I, I didn't show the quadratic formula in the effort of time, um, what speed will it hit the ground? Well, we have a multitude of formulas at our disposal, and the one I believe we would want to use would be our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We just found out the time, so our final velocity will equal our initial velocity, 12, plus negative 9.8 times our time of 3.6 approximately negative 9.8 times 3.6 plus 12 would give us our final velocity is negative 23.28 meters per second, which makes sense because it is going in the downward direction at that moment. It also makes sense that it is more than the original 12 meters per second that we had. Um, and you didn't even see the question, that was part D, sorry. Um, part D, how long will it take to reach the ground? Negative 23.28. Until next time, stay positive, my friends. I will see y'all later. Bye.